A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. You have also forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as his sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy but for pain. Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be dislocated but healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for that holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one be deprived of the grace of God, that no bitter roots spring up and cause trouble through which many may become defiled. The word of the Lord. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The Lord's kindness is everlasting for those who fear him. But the kindness of the Lord is from eternity, to eternity towards those who fear him and his justice towards children's children among those who keep his covenant. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense, offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord.
I think the words written to the Hebrews today speak to our situation that we're living through. Sometimes with all that's around us and the pandemic and up political and social upheaval and all of that that's going on, sometimes we just want to go, yeah. I know that's how I feel. What can I do? How can I do? What can I do? Well, they kind of tell us a little bit <clears throat> what we can do here. Strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Maybe for our weak knees, strengthen them and get on them and pray for the country and people and the sick and all of that. Strive for peace with everyone. In our world today, that seems to be a lost art, a lost thing. It's like nobody wants to strive for peace. They want to conquer. They want to smash you down. They want to be over you. I don't know what the right word is, but it just leads to more anger. I mean, just watch the news. You see how that goes. But in our gospel reading, I also enjoy our gospel reading. And I say this all the time with this gospel reading. The prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. Anybody that's ever raised teenagers will see the truth to that statement. I don't care how successful you are. I don't care how powerful you think you are. <laughs> If you got teenagers in your house, you can identify with that statement. And it's funny, the Jews who were from Jesus' neighborhood presumed they knew who he was, and they failed through that to perceive any of his divine reality. That's sad, too. But we do have to look ourselves to see Jesus in everyone. And not just to see if we can, but to really reach out in love to them. Christ does not choose to be known through outward appearances, even the appearance of virtue. It's hard to imagine the creator of the heavens and the earth would be hindered by anything if he wanted to execute his might, where it says he could work no great deed among them apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. I want to ask you a question. In our world today, which shows where we are, I guess, how many TV preachers have made Mega millions supposedly doing just that. I mean, I know I would freak out if someone came up and laid hands on someone in front of me and cured their lameness or whatever. I mean, I would be just blown away. But yet, they, because they knew him, they knew him growing up, they knew him so well, they couldn't really accept it. You know, I, the thing that got, it always gets me at the end of it, what is the thing in the reading that seems to block them from seeing his true greatness in front of them? Their lack of faith. And so I know I'm challenged all the time, and maybe you are too. How many times has my lack of faith caused me to not receive a blessing that I, should, that I wanted or should have received? How many times have I prayed for something, but in the back of my mind, <clears throat> I say, ah, that's really not going to happen? And I guess, lo and behold, guess what? It doesn't happen. But there have been other times when I've just prayed and things have happened. So we know that it can, and we know that God answers. 
And so, as it says here, faith is a gift from God and we must ask for it and protect it. We should never be amazed when we falter, but we should amaze ourselves if we don't ask for help when we fall. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us today go forth from here and try our best to pray and to live in faith.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <laughs> 